Welcome back. So we're talking about data science uh, in this intro to data science lecture series. And I said in the past that data science is largely about uh, asking and answering questions with data. So kind of the cycle of asking questions and then trying to answer them with data. Uh, Data-driven inquiry is, is one way I like to say it. And I really want to dive into what are the types of questions, just some of the, the like flavor of questions we might ask with, with data. Um, a lot of data science kind of culminates in machine learning where you build a model that you can then deploy and use in the future. You can run hypotheses through it, you can run forecasting and uh, scenarios, and you can use it in the field, for example, to classify images, or you train a robot um, and you want it to go and be autonomous and do something. So, so you, a lot of data science is culminating in machine learning and models that you will use in the future after training them on data. Uh, and so a major question that, that I ask all the time in, in data science is does the past, um, so data often is from the past, does the past represent the future? Um, and this can be kind of, that's a fairly vague statement, but I think you get what I mean. I have historical data often, I've collected a bunch of data, can it represent the future? How can I use my data to predict the future? Those are the ki kinds of questions. So does the data I've collected, do, does it have any bearing on how I wanna use my models in the future, the decisions I'm gonna make in the future? At some point that asks, that begs the question, what do I wanna model? Um, I have to, um, what do I want to, model. It's not a beautiful sentence. So uh, I, I have to ask myself, what can I model? What would be useful to model? Uh, what do I want to model in the future? So in some cases, it's pretty clear cut. Um, you know, Facebook wants to be able to take a picture of a face and tell who it is. Um, you know, in an image search in Google, if there's a picture of a cat, it would love to be able to label what's in the image or even what the image, what scene it represents. Um, some cases it's a little bit less uh, less obvious what you want to do. So, you know, what do I want to model in a you know fluid flow? Well, that requires me to to ask to, to do some hypothesis testing of what I can model, what would be interesting. Uh, but you always ask yourself, what do you want to model? Uh, and a more kind of we're just drilling down in specifics here. So, does the past represent the future? What kinds of things do I want to model? Uh, how will the model be used? That's critically important. How will the model be used? Who's going to use the model? How is it going to be used? Is it going to have to be very, very fast? Is it going to have to be flexible and work in scenarios that the training data didn't didn't uh, see? You know, is it going to have to generalize? Is it who's going to use the model? Is this model going to be used? Um, you know, for something that's societally critical. Is this going to be used for, um, you know, uh, the judicial system and, and sentencing people based on information? Because then you better be able to explain the decisions you made and, and things like that. So how will the model be used? Is, is safety critical? Is this for an autonomous vehicle, a self-driving car? Okay, so you have to know kind of does the data I have represent the future? How, what do I want to model? Who's gonna use the model and how? Um, and then at this point, it's critical to ask what data do I need, right? So this is data driven at some point. So uh, what data do I need? And a similar question is what data do I have? Um, do I have it? Okay, so what data do I need? What data do I have? Uh, okay, so we're asking questions about what data we need. And then you have to ask how uh, hard is it to get the data? Okay, and so this is just one kind of stream of questions that you might be asking that eventually culminate in kind of data. So now I have identified the, the problem I wanna model, 
who's going to use it and how, what data I'm going to need so that the past will be useful in the future. I know roughly how I'm going to get the data, or at least I have an idea. And then I collect that data and I start trying to build models and answer those questions. And so what I've pointed out to you is kind of this path here where the questions are somehow motivating the data uh, that I'm going to collect. So, you know, sometimes someone just hands you data and you mine it and see what you can get out of it. But really, if you can be part of the question asking, the problem solving uh, procedure, and again, this is why you want teams that have you know, problem solving experts and data science experts, and you want your problem solvers to know some data science and your data scientists to know some problem solving. Because if you have uh, the ability to you know, have this, this pipeline of questioning culminating in what data to collect and how you're going to store it and analyze it, this tends to go uh, a lot better than if someone just hands you data and says, what's in it? Okay? But then you start analyzing the data, and what you might realize is that your question wasn't the right question in the first place. So if, if you're lucky, this will motivate kind of a refinement of your questions. Maybe, maybe you decide that there's something different you can model or that you, you can't model what you thought. Maybe there's just not the information in the data that you thought there would be. But that motivates a different set of questioning, a different use case. And so this is kind of a feedback process. Um, and at multiple levels, you want this to feedback between questions and data. Okay? So for me, that's really the essence of data science is asking and answering questions with data. All right, thank you.